Football is back, and so is the NFL on CBS. Today, the Steelers and the Browns. It's being broadcast in Spanish. We're available using the SAP button on your television. The kickoff is next. CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Perfect day in Pittsburgh. NFL kickoff weekend. 71 degrees, sunny skies. Expected the rest of the afternoon. Better than 65,000 will be on hand here at Heinz Field for the Steelers and the Browns. The 123rd regular season meeting. Mike Penton making his debut as a head coach in the NFL. Formerly the defensive coordinator with Buffalo and the Jets. Spent seven years with the Baltimore Ravens. And Mike Tomlin, a veteran now of eight years as a head man in the NFL. The youngest head coach to win a Super Bowl at the age of 36. Steelers won the toss, so Cleveland will kick it off. Pittsburgh elected to receive. Billy Cundiff will do the honors for the Browns. We are underway in the 2014 NFL season. A touchback as Archer, the rookie, was waiting for it. The Steelers will have it at the 20-yard line to open things up. The two-time Super Bowl champion, Ben Roethlisberger, leading this Pittsburgh offense as he has done now over 11 years, Dan. Yeah, he told us yesterday that the no huddle will be a big for the Steelers today, especially for his offensive linemen. They love it because it wears the D-line down so the guys up front can win their individual matchups. Steelers will open up with a double tight end set with Miller and Spaeth. And now Bell sets up as a receiver. Shotgun, first play from scrimmage for Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger throws, makes the connection. Le'Veon Bell, excellent receiver. Last year, 45 catches for Bell in his rookie season. Five-yard pickup on first down. And the thing about Bell, you, you talked about those 45 catches. Haley says that uh, Bell wants more as a wide receiver. He runs excellent pass routes. And you can see on a tough catch over the middle, he made it with ease. And he's playing lighter, 225 pounds. That's a 20-pound difference than his final year at Michigan State. Empty backfield again on a second and five for Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger gets rid of it. Oh, Antonio Brown taking it to the second level and beyond. Explosive pro bowler. Chased down by Mingo. 41 yards on the catch and run. That's just such a big part of the Pittsburgh offense is the quick screens. Ben faked the screen to the left and came back to Brown. Watch Brown make Joe Hayden miss right there at the 50, and he'll get an extra 15 yards. Great start for Pittsburgh. Last year, Brown had 110 catches and a lot of moves like that. 1,499 yards and eight touchdowns. He led the NFL in yards after the catch with 657 with plays just like that. On first down, Bell gets the call, and he picks up a yard up in the middle. Dante Whitner down low to bring him down. Let's take a look at the starting offense for Pittsburgh. And Roethlisberger is thrilled to have Marquise Pouncey back. He went down in the season opener with a right knee injury last year, a loss to Tennessee. Backs and receivers, Heath Miller. He didn't play in the season opener last year. Miller is healthy. He missed the first two games last season with a knee injury. Mike Tomlin said this is a younger group but it did create a competitive environment in training camp. Just roll the ball out and watch him play, which was actually easier for Tomlin than in previous years where he had to monitor the number of reps for veterans. Flag down, we'll get our first one of the afternoon. Ball start, number 66 offense. Five yard penalty, second down. And Roethlisberger saying that the, the Browns were calling the cadence and that's what drew the offense off sides. So back it up after the penalty against De Castro, Mike Tomlin wants an explanation and Mike Patton comes from that defensive background and I guess it's appropriate that the defense is on the field to open things up for Cleveland a team that went four and twelve last year six straight years with five wins or less trying to turn things around in an overhaul second and fourteen Roethlisberger a flip he's got Bell Le'Veon Bell weaving his way through traffic, thrown down at the 15-yard line. 
They are picking up chunks against this Cleveland D. 25 yards. Three for three for Roethlisberger, and none of them have been challenged. A quick screen to uh, Brown gets him across midfield, and now another screen. This one to Bell, and Bell with two catches and a whole bunch of yards already through the air. 28 yards and just two catches. Big back at six foot one. Tomlin mentioned to us that he has lost that weight. Thinks he'll gain it back over time. And a new set of downs for the Steelers to work with. Just short of 15. Miller, the motion man. Just underway. Steelers and Browns. On a give for Bell. Good cut by Bell. Curls it to the corner. Out of bounds. He's got a first down. Keith Miller with a key block. That's an 11 yard gain for Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, Miller gets a good block, but on the outside, watch Antonio Brown here on Joe Hayden. Just screens him away from Bell, and Bell gets the first down. But uh, what the Steelers are doing right now is they're getting Bell and Antonio Brown in space where they can operate. And, Dan, they were 27th in the NFL in rushing yeah. last year. You Boy, have to believe that number is going to go up by a pretty wide number. Sixth play of the drive. Already knocking on the door. Roethlisberger out of the gun on first and goal. Bell the stutter step, and he's met at the four-yard line. No gain on the play. Yeah, the other part of that running attack that should improve for Pittsburgh is, of course, LeGarrette Blunt. And he's not just going to be a short yard or goal line runner, according to Todd Haley. He's going to be especially important in the four-minute offense. But right now, Le'Veon Bell is hot, and I would expect him to stay in the lineup. Todd Haley now in his third year as the offensive coordinator. Pittsburgh going 16th last year in red zone offense. Second and goal for the Steelers. Black Bell with a single setback. Hey, alert, alert! Alert, alert! Set! Waffelsberger on again. Bell, he's got the opening. Touchdown, Steelers! Flag is thrown at the five-yard line. Browns are indicating it's against Pittsburgh. It is. Watch Beecham and Kruger here. Single block, and they're going to get Beecham with the hook right there. That allowed Bell to get into the end zone. But that left hand and arm coming up around the helmet of Kruger was noticed by the officials, and they take that touchdown off the board. And I'll make a switch at running back now with LaGarrette Blunt. The former Patriot and Buccaneer checking in for Le'Veon Bell. Five, six. Five, go. Play clock is winding down. Roethlisberger, two seconds. One second. Gets the playoff. Out of the gun. Roethlisberger, end zone. Incomplete. He was trying to get blunt. Matched up against Kirksey, the rookie out of Iowa, linebacker. This is what you want as a quarterback, getting a running back isolated against the linebacker, but the, the rookie out of Iowa does a nice job of keeping Blunt from getting to this ball thrown just a little bit too far. No illegal contact, although it looked like Kirksey did have his right arm out, preventing LeGarrette Blunt from getting to the ball. Kirksey, I don't know if you yeah. saw this. Madden 2015, the video game, there was a glitch. He was one foot tall in the video game. He was big on that play. Yes, he was. Eighth play of the drive. Pump, Roethlisberger in trouble. Roethlisberger is dumped at the 18-yard line by Kruger. First man there. They get the pressure on Roethlisberger, and they thwart the drive from Pittsburgh. And it's just a three-man rush. They're double-teaming Kruger. Marcus Gilbert with a effort there that's just not good enough. Uh, first sack of the game, and it, not only did the Steelers take a touchdown away, they now make it a more challenging field goal attempt. 36-yard field goal for Sweezum, who has been so good for this Steeler team since signing as a free agent in 2010. He knocks it through, first points of the season for Pittsburgh. 3-0 lead for the Steelers, 9.58 to go in the first. Plays 62 yards for the Steelers. They settle for the 36-yard field goal for Sweezo. Roethlisberger on that drive was 3 of 4 for 69 yards. They moved the ball down the field so quickly, thought they had the touchdown call back with the penalty. And the holding penalty against Beecham on Kruger uh, really gave Cleveland life. Sweezo.
sees him on the kickoff. The danger is Travis Benjamin waiting for him. Two yards deep in the end zone, he takes it out. Benjamin runs into a crowd as he crossed the 25-yard line. Sean Spence makes the play on special teams. Cleveland native Brian Hoyer leads the offense when we come back. Games than ever before with NFL Mobile and by the Lincoln Motor Company and the first ever MKC. Three nothing lead for the Steelers. Brian Hoyer won his first three starts last season and went down with a torn ACL right knee on October 3rd. Cortez Allen over there defensively against Ben Tate, a two yard pickup. So Hoyer making his fifth NFL start was a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers, in fact, back in 2012 for a few weeks. Yeah, he's the pride of St. Ignatius High School in Cleveland, the Wildcats. And he told me yesterday that without Josh Gordon, he's got to establish some type of chemistry quickly with his wide receivers. He gets rid of the ball so fast that uh, the timing has been off in the preseason. Two tight ends, Miles Austin, the motion man, and Tate behind Hoyer trying to establish the run. It's Tate, the former Texan, extending his body and very close to a first down. Good block from John Greco up front. Let's take a look at what Cleveland has got on offense. Joe Thomas has never missed a snap now in his eighth year in the NFL. Backs and receivers, Ben Tate. They signed him to a two-year, $6.2 million deal. He was the backup to Arian Foster in Houston, hard-nosed runner, now in his fifth year out of Auburn. Terrence West has come in, the rookie from Towson. And they've got enough for a first down. Ray Agnew, rookie from Southern Illinois, whose dad played in the NFL for 11 years, will move the sticks. Defensively for Pittsburgh, Cameron Hayward has developed into one of the young leaders of this defensive unit. Linebackers, Ryan Shazier, number 15 pick out of Ohio State. And in the secondary, Mike Mitchell signed to a five-year, $25 million deal, replacing Ryan Clark, who's now in Washington. New set of downs for the Browns to work with. Working out of the gun. Hoyer to throw. Hoyer up top, a little separation. Over the shoulder, grab by Cameron. Hoyer with a strike. Big play, Timmons there defensively. Johnny Manziel cheering along on the sideline to the tune of 47 yards for Cleveland. Well, it's just a speed route here against the linebacker inside Timmons. And there's just no... No possibility that Timmons can stay up with Jordan, the former basketball player. If he doesn't stumble here, he scores. Great throw by Hoyer. What a way to start. Good running attack to get the first down, and your first pass goes for a bomb. So timeout called. Browns use the timeout. We talked to Cameron about Hoyer. He said he's a smart guy. You can tell how much he cares, and he's always trying to make guys around him better. There's a lot of respect for Hoyer in that locker room. Well, when he won those games early last year, the entire city of Cleveland was uh, fired up about the, the Browns' chances. And then, they, then the injury, ironically, against the Buffalo Bills, coached by Mike Pettin. He was running the defense at the time. Now, this is one of the rules the NFL's got to look at. After a long play, they start the, the play clock immediately once the ball is down. And it doesn't allow the teams, both sides, to get down the field and get organized. Cleveland has to burn that time out because there was no time left on the play clock because the players had to travel 50 yards down the field. You mentioned Hoyer's won his last three starts. The last Browns quarterback to win four starts in a row. Vinny Testaverde in 94. Breaking loose. Andrew Hawkins, the former Cincinnati Bengal, signed to a big deal during the offseason. Limited to eight games last season because of an ankle injury he suffered in the preseason. And that's a, a one-yard game. And that's a play that Jarvis Jones has to make in the backfield. He got good penetration, but I think the strength of Hawkins, just 5'7", 180 pounds, and a lot of speed, broke the arm tackle and got a yard or so, but it could have been a five-yard loss. So second and long now for the Browns in the red zone. This is an offense that ranks 17th in the NFL in 2013. Hoyer's got the time. Little flip. It's handled by Miles Austin. Austin brought down inside the five. A penalty marker on the play. 
14 yard gain it's a first down for Cleveland if it stands illegal shift offense multiple players to the snap second down illegal shift is the call from Carl Cheffers well penalties already are uh, being a major factor in this game in the first quarter because the ball would have been close to the five yard line if it hadn't been for that penalty and Pittsburgh would have had a touchdown if it wasn't for their holding penalty. Mike Pettin says he's really enjoyed the head coaching role so far. He said it's been pure football. He doesn't have to worry about micromanaging other areas of the organization. Sixth play of the drive. This is a second and 14 now for Cleveland. Steelers with a 3-0 lead. Hoyer gets rid of it quickly. Incomplete. Pressure was coming. Hoyer felt the heat. Hawkins was in the area. No intention of grounding. Receiver number That's 16. 13-year veteran. Brett Kiesel. Yeah. Right here. Watch his move. As he'll come inside here. And has a free lane right to the quarterback. A good legal hit as he hits uh, Hoyer right in the bread basket and forces the incompletion. Kiesel missed all of training camp. He signed on August 20th, just one preseason game. He has started for the Steelers the last eight years. He's going to have a pronounced role. Third and 14 now. Hoyer set up the screen. Cameron can't get through that initial wave. No gain. Lawrence Timmons was ready for him. Good burst from Timmons defensively. Yeah, you know, you burn Timmons on the long pass, but this is a zone coverage. It's just a three-man rush by Pittsburgh. It's very difficult to have a successful screen pass when all the defenders are looking at the quarterback and at the possible screen. Billy Cundiff has been steady throughout his nine-year NFL career. A 39-yard attempt for Cundiff, who went to the Pro Bowl with Baltimore back in 2010. Trying to tie the game. Low snap. It's handled. 39-yarder is good. We are tied at 3. 5-39 mark of this opening quarter. Spencer Lanning, the punter, able to handle it and get things sorted out for Cundin for the equalizer. It's the premiere of Thursday Night Football on CBS and the NFL Network. It all kicks off this Thursday. The Steelers in Baltimore in AFC North Divisional Showdown. Football starts here Thursday nights on CBS. Billy Cundiff kicks it off. This one will bounce through the back of the end zone. Steelers will have it at the 20-yard line. Tie game, three all. First quarter action continues from Pittsburgh. On your side. And by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. NFL kickoff weekend here in Pittsburgh. Sixth time the Browns and Steelers have opened the season against one another. Dree Archer, rookie out of Kent State, will get an opportunity. First play of this possession. Archer. Four-yard gain for Archer. Let's bring in the third member of our broadcast team. Downstairs to Jenny Dell. Well, and the Steelers kicked off today's game with a touching tribute to the Hall of Fame coach Chuck Knoll, who was here with the Steelers organization for 23 years and had passed away this June. He actually won four Super Bowls with the Steelers organization. And as you can see on the Steelers' helmets, they're going to be wearing this decal all season long to honor his memory. I actually talked with Coach Mike Tomlin about the influence he said he had on him, and he said not a day goes by where he doesn't stop pause and think about the legacy that Noel left and a really fitting game here here today as the last game that coach Noel coached was actually in 1991 against the Browns that was a win and Jenny his wife Marianne his son Chris both in attendance here at Heinz Field today you have a connection to coach Noel as well you both went into the Hall of Fame the same year yeah it was an honor to go into the Hall of Fame with Chuck Noel, Bill Walsh, Walter Payton, and Larry Little, and, and uh, getting to know those guys, and especially the Knowles, uh, just a wonderful experience. What a great coach. I had to compete against them for so many years, and he was tough to beat. Incredible legacy. Four-time Super Bowl champion. Third and six now for the Steelers after the bell run. The gun. Roethlisberger steps up. On time, Antonio Brown. First down, just short of the 40-yard line. That's a 15-yard gain. And where have we seen this before? Brockwisberger doing anything he can.
to buy time in the pocket. This time, he finds a hole right up the middle. A nice little touch pass right to that eye line of Antonio Brown, and that's as good as it gets right there. Brown, big play threat. He's got sure hands. Blue 80. He's tough. At 5'10", 186 pounds. Two catches, 57 yards. Set. On a give. Le'Veon Bell, nothing there. Bell met by Carlos Dansby. Let's go to New York. NFL Today update. JB and Boomer. New England pounds out an answer. Hey, guys, after they had a punt blocked and that led to a Miami touchdown, back comes Shane Green, 80 yards. For the touchdown, they tie the score 7-7 between Miami and New England. Ian, Dan, and Jenny. And another division yeah, of battle, guys, there, as we have here with Cleveland and Pittsburgh, second and 12. Roethlisberger making a change here as we approach three minutes to play in the first. Steelers are 25-5 and five against the Browns since Cleveland came back in the league in 99. Safety foul, Heath Miller. To Sean Gibson there to bring him down. It's a six-yard game for the Steelers. Now Roethlisberger continues to have a hot hand in Really, other than the one sack, we may have an injury for the Steelers here. Yeah, Gibson had a tough time getting to the Cleveland sideline. Trying to bring down Heath Miller was a good, solid tackle. Gibson, a physical safety now in his third year from Wyoming. He had five interceptions last year. There was the stop by Gibson. Jim Leonard will check in for him when we come back. You are watching the NFL on CBS. We've got the safety Gibson up on the trainer's table along the Brown sideline. Jim Leonard, one of the backups for Cleveland. Veteran now in his 10th year in the league. It's a third and six for Pittsburgh. Just short of the 45, Roethlisberger out of the gun. He'll throw the deep ball, one-on-one, -on -one. Marcus Wheaton. Terrific grab by Wheaton against the rookie Justin Gilbert. Wheaton hauls it in. 40-yard gain working the perimeter. The catch was impressive, but the footwork at the end of the catch was remarkable. Watches the eyes of the ball, has no idea where the sideline is. Oh, yes, he does. Gets both feet down with ease and another big play for Pittsburgh. Steelers rush to the line. Bell, the spin move, he gets drilled from behind by Gilbert. Second play of more than 40 yards here in the first quarter for the Steelers. Left foot, right foot drags. Perfect. Perfect. The former track star out of Oregon State. We asked Tomlin about Wheaton. He said that he's developed a really good work ethic just watching Antonio. People in our facility, the Steelers facility, know what he's capable of. Maybe people outside the facility don't. Now they do. Too many injuries last year. In fact, he broke his hand. Second and eight. Eighth play of the drive. Roethlisberger sets. Fires. It's Wheaton. Open along the sideline. Again, finding the rookie, Justin Gilbert. The number eight pick out of Oklahoma State. And he has struggled in the preseason. And he's lucky here that uh, Wheaton gets not turn this one up the field. But the ball kind of carries him to the sideline. But you can see the position that Gilbert had there. Way to the inside looking for an in-cutting route. He's lucky he didn't get burned for a touchdown. Dan Roethlisberger is 7 of 8. 138 yards for Ben Roethlisberger. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Third and one now. Blue 80! LeGarrette Blount is in there, under a minute to play in the first. Blount, up the middle, they're not stopping him. Touchdown, Steelers. LeGarrette Blount is a huge man. Now he had seven touchdowns last year with New England on the ground, but at 250 pounds, this combination of, of Bell and Blunt reminds me of Fast Willie Parker and Jerome Bettis. It's Pittsburgh running style. Nine plays, 80 yards. Blunt gets the score for Pittsburgh. Sweeps him on for the extra point. LeGarrette Blunt 
Signed to a two-year, $4 million deal. His specialty, he can run in between the tackles and punish defenders. He puts the Steelers up on the scoreboard. It's been the one-two combination of Bell and Blunt on the ground, and Bell through the air. Nine plays, 80 yards on that last drive. Roethlisberger, four of four for 69 yards on the drive for Pittsburgh. And, and they got, got a 10-3 the, lead. Yeah, and the last year's number one pick, Marcus Wheaton, getting uh, involved after the number three pick for the Steelers with that long bomb, the beautiful catch, and then one on the sidelines. That's a good sign because it's another weapon, a speed weapon to complement Antonio Brown on the other side of the formations. This is a Pittsburgh team that did let Cotchery and Sanders go elsewhere. So there were questions as to who would step forward. Lance Moore is not available because of a groin injury signed from New Orleans. Kick off from Sneezen to Benjamin. Benjamin stood up just short of the 15-yard line. William Gay celebrating on special teams. Well, Roethlisberger sees this huge gap. And Whitner sees it, too. He knows that somebody's got to make this play. But when your wide receiver is your lead blocker, your defense is out of position. Justin Brown with the block. Not sure they needed it with LeGarrette Blunt going low and powering his way in. 45 seconds left in this opening quarter. Browns now on a 10-3 hole against Pittsburgh. On a pitch. Tate stacked up. Everybody bunched together, and so pushing and shoving after the play, involving Ike Taylor. It's a loss of one for Cleveland. It's going to be very difficult, according to Mike Pitton, for the Browns offensively to have long scoring drives and take a lot of plays. They got the big pass play of 47 yards to tight end Jordan Cameron. Last possession. But that just led to a field goal. Down to 10 seconds left in this first quarter. Cameron, the motion man, second and long. Pitch it, Tate, flip it the other way. Benjamin, Benjamin trying to get to the outside. He does. Out of bounds, short of a first down. But a good run by Benjamin as Polamalu couldn't bring him down. End of the first. Pittsburgh with a 10-3 lead over Cleveland. NFL kickoff weekend will return after these messages. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Kyle Shanahan, the Browns' 12th offensive coordinator since 1999, spent the last four years working with his father, Mike Shanahan, with the Washington Redskins, previous to that with the Houston Texans. Cleveland facing a third and one, first play of the second quarter. Bootleg, throw, incomplete. Looking for Jordan Cameron. Hoyer couldn't make the connection. Mike Mitchell there defensively, and the Browns forced a punt. Well, that was such a big part of the uh, Texans offense, the play action off the stretch play and uh, throwing the ball to the tight end over the middle. Jordan Cameron had his man beat there. The ball just off target. A critical third and short, and the Browns don't convert. Spencer Lanning will punt it. Antonio Brown, a big part of the return game for Pittsburgh. Had a touchdown last year, a long of 67 yards on punt returns, 12.8 average. Spiraling kick. Brown's going to have some room here. Catches cleanly at the 25. Makes his move. Upfield crosses the 30, just short of the 35. Adamosi. Makes the play on special teams. Jim Nance hosts a star pack special celebrating NFL football and classic moments in primetime. Under the Lights, Wednesday on CBS. Well, we know that Ben Roethlisberger has performed well under the lights through the years. Primetime, Sunday afternoons wherever the game is being played. Roethlisberger has delivered. You get a sense hey, that he's even more highly motivated this season, being his 11th year in the league, knowing that, that uh, the sands of time are running out of the hourglass. Three Archer sets up as a receiver. They get it to him. Archer on the outside, and the Browns drive him toward the sideline with Justin Gilbert leading the way. First two possessions for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
Nine plays, 62-yard drive, a field goal, a nine-play, 80-yard drive, resulting in a touchdown. Ball was bounced to Archer. It's right. ruled incomplete. That's a good call by the officials. Even Archer knew that he caught it on one bounce. Roethlisberger keeping him upright. Now we know he creates as the play is extended, but last year they had a tough time protecting him. Zach, 386 times in his career. 42 times last year. Remember, the Browns passed on him in 2004, drafted Kellen Winslow, number six instead. Roethlisberger setting things up downfield, trying to squeeze the ball in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the veteran Dansby. Roethlisberger turns it over, forcing it towards the sideline. Yeah, he had nobody open down the field. He had an outlet receiver on the sidelines, but Dansby was right with him. This is a great interception by Dansby as he overpowers Le'Veon Bell. And Roethlisberger with his first pick of the year. And for Dansby, coming over from Arizona, important acquisition along with Dante Whitner setting the attitude for this Browns defense. They've won where they've been, and that's the culture that Petten needs. He had four interceptions last season for Arizona. Big one here for Cleveland. Give to Terrence West. Rookie out of Towson picks up three yards. He had 2,509 yards and 41 touchdowns last year at Towson. Lawrence Timmons with a stop. Roethlisberger having an extended conversation with his Pro Bowl wide receiver Antonio Brown. And Mike Petton. Attitude. That's the one theme that every Browns player talked about in reference to Mike Petton. What he's brought. No nonsense. Direct. Forthright. From the moment he got the job. Second and seven. Off play action. Hoyer. Gets pummeled. Jarvis Jones. The Steelers are hoping the light goes on for Jones in his second year out of Georgia. He has already matched his sack total from his rookie season with that play. He does a good job of getting right by Cameron and then getting to the quarterback. Hoyer trying to find a receiver, so it's back-to-back pass plays. We've had a quarterback looking down the field, not seeing anybody. Roethlisberger with the pick. And now Hoyer getting sacked. Jones working a lot with assistant coach Joey Porter, who did a lot of that during his NFL career. Loss of 10 has put him out of field goal range. Third and 17. Hoyer too low. It bounces in front of Jordan Cameron incomplete. And a wasted opportunity for the Browns offense. And a catch there puts uh, Cundiff in field goal range. His career long is 56, and he would have been uh, well inside of that. Joey Porter greeting his defensive players as they make their way towards the Steelers' sideline. Spencer Lanning will punt it. Antonio Brown waiting for it at the 10-yard line for Pittsburgh. 52 yards on the first punt for Lanning. Early stages, second quarter, 10-3 lead for the Steelers. Wobbly punt, Brown, fair catch, and he brings it in cleanly. After the 30-yard punt, they'll spot the football at the 11. No harm done after the turnover from Roethlisberger. Fantasy football fans, if you want the best games, there's still time to play on the most awarded site. Create or join a league now at cbssports.com slash football. Pittsburgh Steelers with a 10-3 lead over the Cleveland Browns to Sean Gibson is back in there for the Browns. He got hurt on a tackle earlier, trying to bring down Heath Miller. Two tight ends to start out this drive for Pittsburgh. Running play, Le'Veon Bell. Bell gets to the corner and dives out of bounds. Heath Miller with a good block. That's a seven-yard gain for Bell. That was a big play on first down for Bell, and it's been Roethlisberger with his 41-yarder. To Antonio Brown on that first drive and then on the second drive it's Wheaton for 40 yards. Hoffersberger started 7 of 8. He's missed his last two including the pick by Dansby. Ben Roethlisberger 17 and 1 in his career against Cleveland. 27 touchdowns, 12 interceptions prior to today's matchup so tack on another for Roethlisberger in that category. Give it up to Bell. Up the middle, he's got a first down out near the 25. It's a five-yard gain for Le'Veon Bell. He's 
hard nose, great vision, slashing his way for a new set of downs. Yeah, this offensive line doing a good job here on the ground game on this series so far. That play had the look of a little college uh, read option there as Justin Brown was coming in motion. But uh, the respect that uh, the offensive linemen have for that man, Mike Munchak, obviously been there and done that, done it so well he made it all the way to Canton, Ohio. And his experience as an offensive line coach with Tennessee, he had some great years with Lendell White and Chris Johnson. Steelers, Steelers or Browns called timeout. They had too many men on the field. Correction, that's a full timeout. So, some confusion from the Browns forced to use their second timeout of this first half. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. McDonald's, official sponsor of the NFL. I'm loving it. And by the all-new 2015 Acura TLX. It's that kind of thrill. Well, 13's always been an unlucky number, and it has cost the Browns their second time out of the first half with 11 minutes and 45 seconds to go. So Steelers have it with a 10-3 hey, lead. <laughs> first and 10 from the Pittsburgh 23. Damian Bell, 24 yards rushing, 28 yards receiving. And they get Bell involved again. Foot race for Bell into Cleveland territory. Breaks a tackle. To Sean Gibson finally brings him down. Yeah, but he stepped out at the 47-yard line after a 26-yard gain. But Roethlisberger just has too much time to throw. Look at him survey the field here, wanting to go deep. Now to a safe outlet receiver. And Bell is going to get pushed out of bounds here by Whitner. See that left foot right on the line, and the official trailing the play with the call. So Bell continues to put up numbers in this first five, half. Six, five, six. Ray, Ray. Now in Cleveland Ray, Ray, Ray. territory at the 47-yard line. Roethlisberger pumps, slings it, complete to Wheaton. Marcus Wheaton seeing a lot of action in this first half. Eight-yard gain for Wheaton. But Mike Penton elects to just come with a three-man pass rush on Roethlisberger, and Roethlisberger having all the day, all day to find his receivers Mike Patton is splitting the defensive calling duties with his defensive coordinator Jim O'Neill it's with him in Buffalo with the linebacker coach stutter step move from Bell and the pile pushed out across the 35 yard line for a four yard gain that's a real veteran style runner right there because the stutter step allowed the offensive line to develop their pattern in front of him. And then once he saw a little crack, he accelerated and picked up the first down. That Thursday night game with Seattle and Green Bay, didn't see a whole lot of Richard Sherman being tested. Haven't seen a whole lot of Joe Hayden being tested so far today. Cleveland defensively, Hayden, a pro bowler signed to a huge contract during the offseason, five years, $68 million to stay with the Browns. Roethlisberger in trouble. Avoids it. Out of trouble. Roethlisberger looking for it all. Touchdown! Brown against Hayden. Roethlisberger is a magician. Well, nobody does it better in the history of the game. Just this, escaping the pocket, keeping his eyes down the field, and look at this throw on the run, on the money, in the end zone touchdown. Well, he knows he's got something because Brown is behind the defender. All he has to do is launch it. Had a little wobble on it, but it was perfect. Antonio Brown from Ben Roethlisberger. That connection could put together a huge season for Pittsburgh through the air now that the offensive line will seem to be a thing of the past. Roethlisberger again creating something out of nothing. 
The lethal connection, Roethlisberger to Brown. 35 yards on the touchdown, six plays, 89 yards. It took just over three minutes. Roethlisberger now has 211 yards through the air, a touchdown and an interception in this first half. 17-3 lead for the Steelers. Sweezum will kick it off. Travis Benjamin is the deep man. Benjamin moves forward. One yard deep in the end zone, takes it out. Benjamin. And a shake and big move, flags go down as he crosses the 20-yard line. Terrence Garvin there on special teams for Pittsburgh. Carl Cheffers will sort things out. During the return, holding number 53 return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, real veteran move here at the bottom of the screen. This is our premier matchup all pro receiver and all pro cornerback but watch the move as Antonio Brown will just push off on Joe Hayden at about the 25 yard line that creates the separation and then another just a little bit of a touch right there ensures the cut catch for the touchdown three tight ends in this formation for Cleveland bootleg Hoyer out of his own end zone he airs it out and throws it away Jordan Cameron, the intended receiver, Mike Mitchell there defensively. Back to New York, J.B. and Boomer with an update. Dan Faust knows what it's like to have a big tight end. Well, he had Kellen Winslow, and of course, Tony Gonzalez on the NFL today said, hey, Rob Gronkowski's going to have a big game. There's the first hookup for a touchdown between Brady and Gronkowski since last year. 17-7, New England's running their up-tempo offense all over Miami, dictating pace of play. Back to I and Dan and Jenny. I guess that calf injury wasn't that serious for Tom Brady. <laughs> ben Tate gets the call and Tate carries shy of the 15. That's a five-yard gain for Tate. Second round pick back in 2010. Pull Amalo in on that stop for Pittsburgh. Uh, if this is a critical third down, obviously, for the Browns. They're deep in their own end of the field. If they don't make it, they'll give Pittsburgh with all the momentum that they've built up, great field position. Cleveland Browns, only 26 players remain from the roster that this team ended last season with. And keep in mind, they ended last season with seven straight losses to finish 4-12. Third and five for Cleveland. Hoyer slings it. Incomplete. Taylor Gabriel, the rookie out of Abilene Christian, the intended receiver. The criticism of the Browns has been in this wide receiving court. Do they have enough without Josh Gordon? Well, you can see just a little bit of a hesitation there. Coming across the middle, Gabriel, the rookie. Now the Browns, one for five, converting third downs. Hoyer just three of eight. So fourth down, Spencer Lanning will punt it. 8.49 to play in this first half. They got pressure and Lanning gets it off cleanly. Brown back pedals all the way to the 28 yard line. Good move upfield. Brown splits special teamers and now Brown is off to the races. Hurdles kicks a man and a flag is thrown. They're gonna get Brown for that to hurdle right to the face of Lanning. Tremendous return, but a real mistake by Brown at the end of it. Makes the first guy miss here, then he's going to make nine other guys miss here. Just flailing away at number 84, but I don't know why Brown thought he had to do that. He had the outside. He could have scored easily if he sticks to his left, but instead tries to hurdle landing and puts his foot right in the face mask. A cleat to the face of Spencer Lanning right there. That will definitely cost Antonio Brown. Third and return, unnecessary roughness, number 84 for kicking the defender in the head. 15-yard penalty, first down. Fans may not like that call, but what, what do you expect? You gotta throw a flag on that. Just inexcusable. He could not see his blockers, apparently, because it had a clear sailing to the end zone because Lanning was the last guy. Antonio Brown 
We spoke to Mike Tomlin about him, and he said he's the hardest-working guy on the field. He's obsessive about it. He's still the same guy as he was who came out, thought he was drafted too low out of Central Michigan, a sixth-round draft pick. Back it up to midfield, Roethlisberger on a line. Roethlisberger, he hits Justin Brown, his first NFL catch after being on the practice squad last year. Okay, here's Lanning, and here is Brown, but there's all this room down the sideline with blockers out in front. Been a walk-in touchdown for Brown. Would have been. First down for Pittsburgh inside the Cleveland 40. Eight minutes to play in this first half. Hey, fan it, fan it. 17 to 3, the Steelers in front. Roethlisberger on again. Maybe on Bell, the cut. Bell breaks a tackle. Bell trying to go all the way. Maybe on Bell, touchdown, Steelers. What a run by Bell. 38 yards. Tremendous vision by Bell. Patience as he gets to the second layer. And now watch him make the moves down the field. That one's on Joe Hayden. And now screen can't get him down. And all that waits is a somersault into the end zone. Everything is clicking here for the Steelers on offense. Le'Veon Bell, north, south, east, west. He's got every direction covered. Two plays, 50 yards for Pittsburgh. Sweezum tacks on the extra point. And it's 24 to three, Steelers. Steelers are laying it on thick. We're back to football. Steelers up big on Cleveland. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by State Farm. Pump up your savings with a discount double check today. And by Microsoft. Introducing Cortana, your new personal assistant. 24-3, Steelers in front. Pittsburgh has 296 yards of offense. 50 of those came on a very quick scoring drive. Bell, 38-yard touchdown run. The Browns have 66 total yards. Sweezum kicks it off. Benjamin is going to take it out. Nine yards deep in the end zone. And it turns out to be a bad decision. Pins the Browns deep in their own territory. William Gay there on special teams. For all the outsiders, misfits, and true originals, CBS presents a new series that's pure genius, inspired by a true story. Scorpion, it premieres Monday, September 22nd, only CBS. And the question that will be on everybody's mind, is it Johnny time? Well, Kyle Shanahan told me it would be a gut feeling whether to put him in or not. Well, Kyle, how's your gut feeling? Down by 21. Ryan Hoyer remains in there on a give for Ben Tate. And Tate gets hit by Hayward. Three-yard gain. Timmons got him down low. Well, we asked Mike Pettin about the two QBs Kyle Shanahan's working with. He said Hoyer is poised. He's confident. Hoyer was rehabbing at the facility. He was the first Browns player that Pettin met. Asked him about Manziel. He said Manziel's been very humble, no signs of entitlement. He knows he has to earn it on the field, just like he did in college when he became Johnny Football. Here's Ben Tate. Big opening for Tate, and Tate takes advantage. Best offensive play of the day for the Browns out across the 35, 24 yards. Joe Thomas with a key block to help spring Tate loose. Yeah, and a good block by the fullback Agnew, but watch how Tate in the concert with his offensive line sets up his blocks and cuts behind them Joe Batonio the rookie out of Nevada with a good block this is an athletic offensive line and it suits this style of zone blocking scheme Terrence West comes in West up the middle and nothing there Jason World's first man to greet him for the Steelers limits the rookie to a one-yard game now West is, is a talented runner 
Shanahan said he'll get him in the ball game, but uh, he's got to learn that type of patience that Ben Tate has. That time he rushed that run and uh, barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Browns were 27th in rushing offense last year, 86.4 yards per game. The last six years, they averaged nine points per game against Pittsburgh and the defensive coordinator Dick LeBell. West, nice fake. And West able to turn it into something up the field with a six and a half yard game brought down by Steve McClendon. Well, this is talent right here. When you're in the backfield and the linebacker has his a beat on you like Worlds did that time, you make him miss and then down the field, you make the corner miss. Big run for Terrence West. That's a real confidence booster for the youngster. The Colonial Athletic Association Offensive Player of the Year for Towson, the school's all-time leading rusher. Third and three from the gun. The hand of the pressure, Hoyer throws, almost intercepted. Ryan Shazier had an opportunity at it. And the Browns will punt. Hoyer is 0 for his last five. Well, and on third downs, they're just uh, just as bad. One of six on the day. And Shazier was showing his speed. One of the fastest linebackers the Steelers have ever drafted. And another Ohio State product that the uh, Steelers have had a lot of success with over the years. He is the first rookie to start on defense in the season opener since Kendrell Bell. Four straight punts now for Cleveland. Lanning to Brown. Brown looking for the angle. Slow down from behind and a flag yeah, is thrown. Yeah, and yeah, Brown yeah. gets hit down low by Jordan Poyer. 38-yard punt and a nine-yard return for the Pro Bowler Brown. They're going to get Robert Golden for a block in the back. This will back the Steelers up inside the 20-yard uh, line. Return, inside the 15, illegal block in the back. Number 20 of the return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Big Bang Theory is time traveling to a new night with back-to-back -back episodes. Don't miss Emmy winner Jim Parsons as the new season begins Monday, September 22nd, only CBS. Kyle Shanahan sitting down with both Hoyer and Manziel with the Steelers in front, 24-3, just under five minutes to go in this first half. Roethlisberger, 223 yards on 11-14. A handoff up the middle for Blunt. Three-yard game as we check in with Jenny Dell. Well, the Steelers are clearly playing with confidence right now. There's almost an air of cockiness down here on the sideline. It's like they're doing exactly what they expected to do to start this game. Guys, the fans are going wild, but it's cool, calm, and collected down here on the side. Well, Jenny, I think this Pittsburgh team a year ago was shocked with their performance against the Tennessee Titans. They had won 10 straight at home to start the season until that loss to Tennessee last year. Low scoring game 17 to 9. Blunt gets the call. Dansby with the hit. And I think a lot of it had to do with Pouncey going down early in the game. It just took all the wind out of the Steelers' sail. Well, it was the eighth play of the game. And he goes down because David DeCastro, trying to cut the defensive lineman, uh, cut his own player. And then they had another injury on the offensive line. Cody Wallace was injured, so it was a rough afternoon for the Steeler offense, but the emotional part of the injury to Pouncey really took the air out of the team. Steelers finished 8-8 eight eight last season, back-to-back -back years of 500. Injuries caught up to this team. They finished strong, though, and had a chance for the playoffs, amazingly enough, for the final week of the year. Outside, Antonio Brown creating after the catch. And looks like he was out of bounds just short of the first down. Buster screen with a chase down, six yard gain for Brown. Well, there's nothing like speed though, is there? If he had another uh, yard or so of sideline, he might have gotten that first down, but uh, screen with a good job of keeping him from getting it and, and forcing this punt, a rare three and out for the Steeler offense. Steelers have posted 10 straight home wins against Cleveland. That's the longest home winning streak they have against any opponent. First punt for Brad Wing. First NFL punt in his first year out of LSU. 
Scotty Alsi. It's a hold of this one. Benjamin, the return man, taking it back for the 25. Circling and nothing doing upfield. 56 yard punt and a four yard return. A penalty marker down. Antoine Blake sealing off the area on special teams. During the kick, holding number 59 return team. 10 yard penalty, first down. So back it up for the Browns. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report, JB, Tony, Bart, Boomer, Coach Cower. They've got the latest NFL scores and highlights, as well as a special preview of the debut of Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network. That's coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. 24-3, Steelers have the lead, 3-0-1 to play in this first half. Steelers, last time they won the AFC North with 2010, Baltimore won it back-to-back -back years. Cincinnati won it last year. And for Cleveland, the same result over and over. Punts for the Browns. They've been limited to three points. And 100 yards. Hoyer is sacked by Worlds. Jason Worlds. And they just had a three-man route that time for Hoyer. And the Steelers, after the play action, was real lucky here that... Uh, he hung on to this ball. Great effort by Worlds. Watch him grab the bicep of Hoyer right there. Hoyer with a good grip on the ball. That would have been a disaster if that one comes loose. Steelers used the franchise tag on Worlds, so he is earning a hefty $9.75 million this season. Johnny Manziel still in spectator mode. Timeout called by Hoyer. Final timeout for the Browns. Third and final charge timeout, Cleveland. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Since 1999, the Browns have had 20 different starting quarterbacks. That's the most in the NFL over that span. Miami is second in that category with 18 different starting quarterbacks. They draft Johnny Manziel in the first round. Hoyer gave them a lift last year before he had the injury against Buffalo. In talking to the players that we talked to yesterday, the head coach, there was no doubt within the locker room that Hoyer had won the job. But you and I both know that if the team struggles, the speculation will pick up and pick up tenfold. And it has, and the team has struggled in this first half. And they need a spark of some kind. Second and 18. Andrew Hawkins. Hawkins using the speed. He gets banged down across the 15 by Ryan Shazier. It's a nine-yard gain for Hawkins on the catch and run. Starting to sound like a broken record about these third down situations for the, uh, the Browns, but they need this one. They're going to have any shot at it. closing this gap. Two minutes to play, first half. Steelers with a 24-3 lead on Cleveland. Cleveland Browns down 24-3. They had not been to the playoffs since 2002 when they lost to Pittsburgh in the wild card round that year. Penalty flags down, pointing in the direction of the neutral Steelers. Neutral zone infraction, number 93 defense. His movement into the neutral zone caused a reaction by the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Smart play by Mitchell Schwartz. Watch as uh, Worlds jumps here. And because he jumps in the neutral zone, that allows Schwartz to come out of his stance and smartly point at the offender. Dick LeBeau, 77 years young, Hall of Famer, now in his 16th year with the Pittsburgh Steelers in two separate stints. On third down, Poyer. Puts it where it needs to be. Gabriel loses his helmet and the football. And they're going to rule it incomplete. Taylor Gabriel, a Division II product. Complete pass. And yeah, when he hits the ground, the ball comes out. You must complete the action of catching the ball. Maintain control once you hit the ground. Got ripped out by Taylor as Gabriel rolled down to the turf. You've got to make that catch. In that situation, with the score as it is, into the first half, 
Somebody on this Cleveland team has got to make a play. Gabriel fails on that attempt. So fourth down with a minute 51 to play in this first half. Spencer Lanning has been a busy punter. And he took a cleat to the helmet on a return from Antonio Brown. Brown fair catch called for. And he brings it in at the 31-yard line. A 41-yard punt. Penalty marker is back at the 23. Turning the kick, holding, receiving team number 98. 10-yard penalty, first down. Backup linebacker Vince Williams called on the hole. So they'll back it up for the Steelers in their own end of the field. Now it's been a wonderful first half for Ben Roethlisberger. Hitting second-year player Marcus Wheaton with a bomb there. And a beautiful throw on the run to Antonio Brown over the top of Joe Hayden. 12 of 15, 229 for Big Ben, all in the first half. And those decisions made during the offseason. Jericho Cotchery moves on to Carolina. Emmanuel Sanders goes to Denver defensively. Lamar Woodley now at Oakland. Ryan Clark in Washington. Nine new starters in week one compared to last year's season opener for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've been one of the most stable organizations in football and pretty consistent with their personnel. We've seen some turnover the last couple of years. Roethlisberger, a strike to Justin Brown. Penalty marker thrown and a second one comes down. I think the first one's going to be against Justin Brown for pushing off on Justin Gilbert. And then Gilbert obviously will pick up the second flag for this slam dunk on Brown. Now Gilbert did not have to shove off as he did to make this catch. Ball perfectly thrown by Roethlisberger to the back shoulder. But he pushed off on Gilbert. And then Gilbert makes a rookie mistake on the sidelines. Justin Brown out of Oklahoma. Transferred from Penn State. No Lance Moore, so there are fouls by both teams on the play. Pass interference, offense number 15. Unnecessary roughness for contact out of bounds. Number 21, those fouls offset. Replay first down. Uh, here's the push off by Justin Brown as he sees the ball coming here. And just with a right hand, sends Gilbert down the sidelines. And now Gilbert retaliates to the uh, move by Brown. <laughs> and it's always the second guy that's going to get the flag especially when you do it on your opponent's sideline. So offsetting penalties. First and 10 for Pittsburgh at the 20-yard line. A 24-3 lead for the Steelers and Mike Tomlin. Le'Veon Bell, single setback. Roethlisberger out of the gun. Handed off for Bell. There's the vision of Bell working again. Hit from behind and Bell is thrown down on the play by Jabal Sheard. Cleveland believes they are very deep in their front seven. They can mix and match, and Sheard, now a four-year veteran who played at Pittsburgh and was the Big East Defensive Player of the Year back in 2010. Yeah, he brought Bell down on his leg, and he came up limping after that. Once again, working out of the gun. Roethlisberger throws. Oh, what a snare! by Brown and the Steelers will call a timeout after the 17-yard hookup to Antonio Brown 115 yards receiving in the first half just a total layout by Antonio Brown on this high hard fastball from Roethlisberger great control all the way to the ground and wisely Roethlisberger calls timeout This is how you bounce back from an interception, I think. You find Antonio Brown a couple of times. You've got time to throw. And there's Sheard still feeling the effects of tackling Le'Veon Bell a couple of plays back. So the Steelers are on the move again. Just under a minute to play in this first half. Six straight completions now for Ben Roethlisberger. He is 13 of 16 for 247 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Operating out of the gun, Roethlisberger popped up in the air, incomplete. Keith Miller, the intended target for Roethlisberger. 
second down 10. That was really good coverage by the Browns in the secondary that time as they had about two or three players, including Dansby, shadowing Heath Miller. Injury update, Ben Tate, knee issue. His return is questionable right now for the Browns. And, and huge question marks at running back for Cleveland. Well, and that's been Tate's history, too. Did not stay healthy, backing up Arian Foster in Houston. And he's got two rookies backing up in Cleveland. Roethlisberger hits Marcus Wheaton. Wheaton's presence Wheaton. has been felt here. Justin Gilbert again on the defensive end. It's an 11-yard gain, and Roethlisberger keeps looking towards the rookie side. Steelers trying to get sorted out here. They'll make a change with Bell coming back on for Pittsburgh. And you know your passing offense is in good shape when your two wide receivers are your leading receivers for big yardage. 116 for Brown, 66 for Wheaton. You throw Bell in there for 58 yards. All in the first half. Tight, tight, tight. 34 seconds to play. Second quarter. Liz, Liz. All the way to 58 and 23. Steelers do have two timeouts to work with. Roethlisberger gets rid of it quickly. It's Miller. And the chance of Heath from this Heinz Field crowd. Nine-yard gain for Miller. Carlos Dansby with the stop for Cleveland. Steelers use one of the two remaining timeouts. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report. JB, Tony, Bart, Boomer, Coach Cower, the latest NFL scores and highlights, a special preview of the debut of Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network. It's coming up, Verizon Halftime Report. It'll be a good one Thursday night, won't it? It sure will. The Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. Now the question will be whether or not Mike Pettin pulls the trigger and goes with Johnny Manziel in the second half at some point to run this Cleveland offense. The Browns are down 24-3, are in jeopardy of having that Steeler lead actually grow before we hit the break. Solid, Sean solid, Sweezum, solid, solid, his career long at Heinz Field is 49 yards. Career long overall is 52 yards two years ago. Third and one for Pittsburgh. 30 seconds to play first half. Roethlisberger to Miller. First down inside the 30. Roethlisberger orchestrating everybody to get set up here. Down to 18 seconds. They spike the ball. 17 seconds left. It'll be second and 10 for Pittsburgh with 17 seconds to work with. Total yards, 357 for Pittsburgh. Watch Heath Miller just working in the middle of the field. Patient on his route, just... Uh, inside a, really a well-designed play as he beats Dante Whitner and gets Swedes in, in comfortable range. Set, AB, on your regular route. Yeah. Let's see if the Steelers can get even closer here. Right, Bell just to the side of Roethlisberger. Pressure comes. Roethlisberger ends up. Flat down. Antonio Brown against Joe Hayden. Hayden told us there's a mutual respect there. Brown doesn't do a whole lot of talking. Prior to the pass, holding number 23 defense. Five-yard penalty, automatic. First down. But the frustration building for this Cleveland defense. Well, they called holding on Hayden. And you can see he's got a pretty good grab on that jersey there. It's what the officials have been looking at throughout the preseason is any tug on the jersey. Not pass interference, just a five-yard penalty, but an automatic first down. Hayden told us that the coaches actually made the defensive backs wear boxing gloves in practice so they couldn't hold the receivers, and he felt it was a pretty good exercise. Yeah, five, well, six, five, he needed those gloves on that play because he definitely grabbed the jersey. Twelve right. seconds left in this first half. Justin Brown, the motion man. Roethlisberger steps up. Roethlisberger to run. Slides down at the 15-yard line. They call the timeout with three timeout. seconds left. Pittsburgh. A 30. Now Ben Roethlisberger came into the meeting. We've met with him now for many, many years. You thought he looked trimmer. Well, he admitted that he hired a trainer in the offseason, a nutritionist, and a chef. His weight is down, but it's not down 
as far as when uh, Bill Cowher wanted him to get more lean because he felt he lost strength when he, he got too light. So he looks in perfect shape. And maybe more important than his physical shape, the mental shape that he showed on that play there. Knowing he couldn't get to the end zone, knowing the clock is running down, get down on the field, call timeout, your last timeout, and bring out your field goal team. Completely aware of the situation. Yep. The 11-year veteran. His number seven retired at Miami, Ohio. 34-yard attempt. Sean Sweezum. The Steelers end the first half, tacking on three more points and a 27-3 lead over the Cleveland Browns. Pittsburgh with 364 yards of offense, and they hold the Browns to 101 total yards. 27 to 3 at the end of the half. We'll come back for Ryzen Halftime Report. After this message and a word from your local station, you're watching the NFL on... Getting ready for the start of the second half. The Steelers in front, 27-3 on Cleveland. As we take a look at the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam, Roethlisberger to Brown. Well, in his 11th year, he's still the magician in the pocket. Evading the pass rush, eyes down the field, and then a phenomenal throw running full speed to a wide open, almost, in the end zone, Antonio Brown. It's a great job by Big Ben. What a first half for him and the Steeler offense. Back here in the broadcast booth, Ian Eagle along with Dan Fouch, Jenny Dell on the sidelines. Two perspectives here, the Pittsburgh perspective. It's going according to script. Tremendous first half on offense and on defense for Cleveland. You know the speculation is there. Will Johnny Manziel get an opportunity here? Well, this team needs something right now, and if he can provide the spark, I say go with them. They have a package prepared. They've worked in practice on, on what he can do. It's a, more of a read option style of offense, not your typical pocket passing type of offense, but uh, the Browns down by 24. Time's a wasting. For Pittsburgh, Ben Roethlisberger, healthy offensive line, and a fortified running game. That was obvious in the first half. Well, and he's distributing the ball to all his receivers. His two wideouts have been unstoppable, but Le'Veon Bell's really been the key. Yeah. His ability as a wide receiver started the game with a, a huge catch, and then the touchdown run he had was phenomenal. So I expect Pittsburgh to continue to doing the things that they've been so successful with in that first half. Before we get the second half started, let's send it downstairs to Jenny Dell. I just spoke with Coach Patton, and he said it's very simple. This team just needs to play better. Obviously had to ask about Johnny Manziel. He said, we'll see. And an update on Ben Tate. As of now, he's doubtful to come back into the game. And, Jenny, that's a huge hit for this Cleveland offense. They are not deep at that position in terms of experience. Tate is backed up by Terrence West and Isaiah Crowell, a couple of rookies. For Mike Tomlin, Ben Roethlisberger, they've been together now. Their eighth year together. Todd Haley just popped his head in there in his third year as the offensive coordinator. Cleveland will have the football to open up this second half. Sean Sweezum will kick it off. Taylor Gabriel, the rookie, is the return man. And this one goes over the head of Gabriel. A touchback. Mike Pettin's decision at quarterback is to stick with Brian Hoyer. And he leads the offense onto the field to begin this third quarter. First half numbers, it's all Pittsburgh. 364 total yards for the Steelers. That one turnover, Roethlisberger got intercepted by Dansby. And it's been the big play for the Pittsburgh offense. They have five plays of 30 yards or more in the first half. Best first half Roethlisberger has ever had for passing yards, 278. Hoyer throws to Andrew Hawkins on first down, and two, three penalty markers are down on the play. Mitchell and Taylor combined defensively. It's a 16-yard gain through the air. Personal foul, face mask, number 24 defense. 15 yards will be added at the end of the play. Automatic first down. And it's the veteran, 12th year in the league, Ike 
Taylor, who's won a pair of Super Bowls for the Steelers. Well, Taylor's 6'2", and Hawkins is 5'7". Ball is thrown low, and Taylor slipping and falling down. Just reaches out to try and grab anything. Unfortunately for him, it was the face mask. Andrew Hawkins out of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. 90 minutes east of Pittsburgh. Running play, Terrence West. West with a huge run into Pittsburgh territory at the 27-yard line. Chased down by Jarvis Jones. 22-yard rip for the rookie West. Now watch the job here by Barnage. And the right tackle, Mitchell Schwartz, as they get off and seal that side. And Cleveland moving quickly here as they give it to West again. Tries a spin move and picks up two yards. Just gets his body to the 25. He gets brought down by Brett Kiesel. And some of Pittsburgh's own medicine, the no-huddle offense, led by Hoyer. Moving quickly here. Take the handoff, throw, wide open, Miles Austin. The veteran wideout who came over from Dallas, pro bowler back in 09 and 2010. He gets in on the act with a 17-yard grab. Are these the same two teams we saw in the first half? I believe so. Again, right to the line of scrimmage, good up-tempo offense executed by the Browns. Hoyer throws to the outside, Taylor Gabriel. Hit along the sideline, inside the five. Four-yard gain, Ike Taylor with a stop. And Cleveland moving quickly here. They've got Isaiah Crowell, the rookie out of Alabama State, in the backfield, working out of the pistol. Give it to Crowell, a blast for the touchdown! The Browns with an early third quarter answer. Well, Jenny Dell said that uh, Mike Benton says we gotta play better. Message delivered and message received. What an opening drive to start the second half. All positive plays for the Browns. Six plays, 80 yards, and almost a walk-in touchdown for the, the uh, rookie, Crowell. Undrafted free agent, seeing action because of the injury, knee injury to Ben Tate. And Crowell takes it in to cut into this Pittsburgh lead. Billy Cundiffon for the extra point. 27 to 10, Steelers in front. Hoyer leads them down the field. A good run from West, another run from Crowell. Johnny Manziel, a good teammate there to congratulate Hoyer. Browns go six plays, 80 yards. First possession of the second half. Just took a minute 33. Hoyer was three of three on the drop, getting rid of the football quickly and moving at a faster pace with the no huddle. Billy Cundiff kicks it off to Archer and Blunt back deep. This will be the rookie. Archer circling, move. Flags are down. Archer. And he is brought down at the 40 yard line by Aaron Berry on special teams. Yeah, three flags are about the 11, the 12, and the 14 yard line. That means the uh, Steelers are going to be during the return up. illegal he block in the back number 57 return team half the distance goal first down coming up next US Open women's final Serena Williams goes for her third straight title against Caroline Wozniacki and then tomorrow at 5 Eastern Kay Nishikori takes on Marin Cilic in the men's final that's the fourth penalty against the special teams of the Steelers this afternoon you going to break down this match Dan for me you know what? I, I'm looking forward to it because uh, these are the two of the very best. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the lob is, is key. You know, <laughs> Look the that's lob and the smash. Very strong analysis Thank there, McEnroe. What, are you kidding me? you got to <laughs> be kidding me. Give it up to Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> One yard gain and just about everybody ready for him defensively. So let's see if it translates on the defensive side of the ball for Cleveland. The great start in the third quarter on offense. Pittsburgh did basically whatever it wanted to do in the first half on offense. Yeah, the Browns have momentum, and they've got field position for their defense here. Steelers don't get much of anything on first down. Do you think the lob could be the key as well? I think the yeah. smash here. The smash. Down, Seven to nine. Roethlisberger gives it up. Bell is wrapped up. Going up the middle for two yards. Kruger there to bring him down. Ben Roethlisberger, career high in a first half 
for Roethlisberger. 278 yards through the air. And right now, the first time that we've seen Darius Hayward Bay, the former number seven overall pick in 2009, who played for the Raiders and the Colts. Down a couple of receivers, Moore and Martavis Bryant, looking out of Clemson, both out. Blue 80! Blue 80! Roethlisberger steps up. And they get him down. And a flag thrown back at the four. Kruger again, first man there. They're going to call holding, so this will be decline Holding. setting up a number 77 offense that penalty is declined result of the play fourth down and yeah, Marcus Gilbert with the uh, penalty also gave up a sack in the first half to Paul Kruger in fact uh, last year Gilbert allowed 11 sacks which was third most in the NFL he's off to a rough start this afternoon Brad Wing is standing in his own end zone to punt it. Travis Benjamin is waiting for it at the 47th clean. High punt from Wing. Benjamin moves forward. Fair catch at the 49. They will open up this possession on Pittsburgh's end of the field with a penalty. During the kick, throw. holding. Kicking team number 50, excuse me, receiving team number 53. 10-yard penalty, first down. And it's Craig Timeout. Robertson, so that will now bring it back into Cleveland territory. Hoyer back on the field with the Browns offense. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. FedEx One Rate. Simple flat rate shipping with the reliability of FedEx. And by Kelly Blue Book. Find out what you should pay for your next new car at kdb.com. Third time the Cleveland Browns have opened the season in Pittsburgh. 1959, a 17-7 loss. 1989, a 51-0 win. Terrence West showing off his running skills. West with the handoff. West with a six-yard gain. Good effort from the rookie. And smart to uh, continue with this up-tempo offense going to the line of scrimmage. They're trying to pump crowd noise into the stadium, but the stadium looks like it's almost half empty with the fans not returning from halftime. <laughs> Give it to West again. Oh. He gets drilled. West able to stay upright, but Ryan Shazier showing off the skills that made him the number 15 overall pick. Watch number 50 square up and attack the line of scrimmage. How West stays on his feet is as impressive as this hit. Legal. Absolutely, he's a ball carrier. Shazier, first-team All-American. Both players can lower their head. Third and three now for Cleveland. Play clock is down to five. Isaiah Crowell is in. Out of the gun. Hoyer has the time. Short throw, incomplete. Flag down. Lawrence Timmons there defensively against Crowell. Penalty marker at the 45 on Pittsburgh's end of the field and the 39 on Cleveland's side. There are two fouls by the defense on the play. Prior to the pass holding, number 24, that penalty is declined. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face, number 96. That penalty is accepted, five yards automatic, first down. So the accepted penalty against Cam Thomas, who came over as a free agent from San Diego. And that's one of those points of emphasis that the Officials have stressed throughout the preseason on both sides of the ball, of hands going up into the face mask and bending the head back. And that was called on Thomas. And Dan, it is a knee sprain for Ben Tate. He will not return for the Browns. Motion man, Miles Austin, take the handoff. Hoyer pulls the trigger and throws a strike to Andrew Hawkins. 20-yard gain through the air, and the Browns are on the move again. Yeah, Hoyer doing a good job of getting back after the play fake. Had time to throw in a good vision there to find the receiver in a nice void in that secondary. New set of downs for the Browns to work with. Bootleg, Hoyer on the move. Low throw, 
Sliding down is Benjamin to make the catch in his third year for Miami. That's an 11-yard gain. And Kyle Shanahan's offense is now finding a rhythm. Now they had three first downs in the first half. They have six already here in the second half. First and ten inside the 20. Crowell gets the call. Slides down low and a hit at the 15-yard line by Polamalu. Named a captain for the first time in his career. Polamalu now in his 12th year. Having just signed a three-year, $20 million extension for the Steelers. And he's had a lot of success against the Browns in his career. Four interceptions in the last six games. Give it to Crowell. Long strikes. Crowell a burst. Touchdown. The Cleveland Browns in rally mode. Now they worked this same run earlier to Ter Terrence West behind Barnage and got tight end Jim Dre. This time Crowell will benefit from outstanding blocking here by the tight ends. Little help from the outside receiver and Taylor Gabriel. And Crowell is having himself a debut. Isaiah Crowell. He had 1,121 yards and 15 touchdowns last year for Alabama State. Crowell, two rushing touchdowns, capping off a six-play, 59-yard drive. The Browns have quieted this Steelers crowd. It's now a 10-point game in Pittsburgh. So not on 60 minutes, they aren't even out of middle school and they're being recruited to be Division I college quarterbacks. Meet the man developing the next Mannings only on 60 minutes tonight. 27-17, Steelers leading the Browns, 9.05 to play in the third quarter. This has looked like a completely different Cleveland team in the second half. Kungif kicks it off. A completely different Steeler team as well. Pittsburgh will have it at the 20-yard line. Well, these franchises met for the first time October of 1950. Otto Graham, a pair of touchdown plunges in the first half. In the third, a misplayed handoff by the Steelers resulted in a safety. That looks like a beach ball bouncing around in the end zone. The Browns went on to win it 30 to 17. Did you call that game? Uh, that was the year before I started, so I missed it by one year, Dan. You look so young. Jim Brown surrounding himself with some very important people. Play fake, Roethlisberger. Called in by Justin Brown. Right, that collision there where the ball was caught by Brown. Buster Screen got hit by his own teammate. And he's having trouble getting up. He's not getting up. Medical staff comes out to check on Screen. Now in his fourth year out of Chattanooga. Scrappy, 5'9", 185 pounds. He's grabbing the left leg. Justin Gilbert was taken in the first round. We've seen a lot of Gilbert. Aaron Berry would be the next man up for Cleveland. NFL Today update, J.B. and Boomer in New York. Miami capitalizing on an opportunity. They're coming back. Tom Brady fumbles the ball. Four plays, 34 yards, culminating in this touchdown pass from Ryan Tannehill to Mike Wallace. Miami ties it up 20-20, deep in the third quarter. I know both Bart and Tony said they expect Miami to make some noise. Back to Ian, Dan, and... All right, guys, thanks very much. Tannehill, a couple of touchdown passes. Screen is up on his feet. And limping toward the Cleveland sideline. It's not going to be Barry. It's going to be Keewan Williams, the rookie out of Pitt. That will now check in for Mike Pettin's defense. Clock is ticking. We're down to 8 to play in this third quarter. Steelers with a 10-point lead after a huge first half on offense. Running play to Bell. A little pause from Bell allowed the hole to open up, and he turns it into a six-yard gain. The veteran Carlos Dansby, complete linebacker, second-round pick back in 2004, makes the play. Yeah, try to get a little energy in this offense. Uh, Roethlisberger decides to go to the line of scrimmage, up the tempo. 
Cleveland already has more yards in the second half than they did in the entire first half. Second and four here for Pittsburgh. Rush is coming. Roethlisberger spins out of trouble. Throws. Complete. Caught by Bell. Le'Veon Le Bell Le has Bell. players banging into one another as he remains on his feet. And he's got a first down for the Steelers. Nine yards through the air. Now, Chris Kirksey is a rookie, and he just got schooled by Big Ben. He's got a free shot at the quarterback and a little reverse pivot, a perfect pass, and a first down. Into Cleveland territory, 7.37 to go in the third. Empty backfield here for Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger has gone over 300 yards on that last play. Yeah, no, 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 that's the mic. Hey, fucking minute. Blake Lock is down to two. Get the snap off. Roethlisberger steps up. What a grab. Antonio Brown with a flag down. Joe Hayden there defensively. Anything you put near him, Brown seems to be able to grab it. And this is a difference between what... Uh, how he's Prior played today and some of the Cleveland Number receivers. Number 23 defense. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Automatic They're going to take down. away the catch and accept the penalty because it gives them an automatic first down. But it's a spectacular catch. It's one of those points of emphasis again. Of course, we've seen offensive pass interference today. We've seen illegal contact and holding. First down just short of the 40-yard line. Steelers have something going here with a 27-17 lead. Give it to Bell. Bell redirects. Finds an opening and carries it for four yards. Everybody there defensively for Cleveland just looking to bring down Le'Veon Bell. It seems like everybody's got a shot at him, but he makes a couple of guys miss with patience. And really, uh, for a four-yard run, that was really entertaining. Le'Veon Bell, he was charged with DUI on August the 20th and possession of marijuana, was in the car with his teammate LeGarrette Blunt, who was also charged with possession of marijuana. They're going to let this one play out legally before anything is done at the league level. Roethlisberger is sacked back at the 43-yard line. Billy Wynn and Chris Kirksey. Paul Kruger supplied the initial heat on Roethlisberger. Yeah, Kruger forces him to step up, and now Ramon Foster can't keep Kirksey away from the quarterback. So Kirksey's, Kirksey picks up his first NFL sack. So back it up. Now third and 12. Under six minutes to go in the third. Ten-point lead for the Steelers. Just a three-man front here for Cleveland. Roethlisberger can't handle the snap. Roethlisberger brought down, coming away with the football. Armonte Bryant. But Roethlisberger is ruled down on the play. It'll just go down as a big loss for Pittsburgh. Kruger also in there for Cleveland. Well, the snap came back a little firm from Pouncey, but it appeared that Roethlisberger wasn't ready for it. And he just got slammed dunked there by Amani Bryant. So the Steelers moving in the wrong direction at the end of that drive. And Brad Wing is on to punt it. Well, remember last year when Petten was a defensive coordinator for the Bills, he sacked Rockefeller four times. They got him three times so far. Flag thrown. Fair catch called for. At the 18-yard line, penalty marker is down. These fans are shell-shocked. This place was juiced up There's in no the first half. There's no holding on the play. The action occurred after the fair catch. Pittsburgh built a big lead. Cleveland coming back, looking strong in this second half. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Bose, official sound of the NFL. Cleveland Browns have not won in Pittsburgh since 2003. Tim Couch 
was the starting quarterback that day. They trailed the Steelers 27 to 17. On a give to Terrence West. And not much room for him to work with a one-yard game. Mike Benton is the eighth Browns head coach since they re-entered the league in 1999. Names like Palmer and Davis, Rubisky, Cornell, Mangini, Shermer, Chudzinski preceded him. Benton getting his opportunity as a head coach of the NFL. The throw by Hoyer, and it's caught by the veteran Jim Dre. Fifth year, formerly with the Arizona Cardinals, a seventh-round draft pick. And Petten's team has looked composed in this second half, operating at a much higher level on this side of the ball, really both sides of the ball. Give it up to West, trying to move quickly here. West is engulfed by Steve McClendon. It's a loss of two on the play. Well, McClendon's a nose tackle, and he gets by Alex Mack. And just a tremendous effort to get penetration, locate the ball carrier, and drop him. Second and 12, using the pistol, Steelers will call a timeout. Time out. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Pittsburgh. Yeah, I think At the 3.41 mark of the third, it's been all Browns in this third quarter. Different story in this third quarter compared to the first half for Cleveland on offense. Hoyer throws, incomplete. Trying to hit Taylor Gabriel on the outside, defended there by William Gay. It's just the first incomplete pass thrown by Hoyer in the third quarter. So it sets up a third and 12. That's how important that tackle by McClendon was on second down. On first down, rather, that cost the Browns a couple of yards. Just one of seven for the Browns today on third down. And Jordan Cameron is not out there for Cleveland. Hoyer from the gun, pumps, throws, oh, he's got his man, Hawkins, into Pittsburgh territory. Hawkins comes up limping, 25 yards on the pass play. Pretty cool customer in Hoyer, pocket was collapsing, put the ball right to the hands of Hawkins, but Hawkins limps off. Hoyer now 11 of 19, handoff for West, runs up the middle, driven down after the gain of four by the rookie Terrence West. Right now, it's a two-headed running back attack with two rookies, West and Crowell, with the injury to Ben Tate, out with a knee sprain. Second and six for Cleveland, seventh play of the drive. Fake the handoff, Hoyer throws, wide open, caught by Dre. Jim Dre is brought down inside the 25. That's a 20-yard hookup. Now, when you're running the ball well, the play action works really, really well. After the fake to West, a little rollout by Hoyer, and look how wide open Dre is. New set of downs for Cleveland inside the 25. We're down to 2.25 to go in the third. Ten-point lead for the Steelers. Browns are threatening again. Handoff to West. West is brought down at the 14. Schwartz and Barnage creating some space for West to work with, about a nine and a half yard game. It is enough for a first down. Working out of the pistol now. Boyer will make a change, under two minutes to go in the third. Check to a running play, zigzag from West. Down after a two-yard pickup, Cortez Allen, who just signed a big contract yesterday to stay with the Steelers. Signed to a $26 million extension. He makes the play for Pittsburgh. Well, both West and Crowell had a lot of action in the preseason. West had 31 carries to lead the team, but uh, Crowell had a huge game against the Chicago Bears when he went over 100 yards. So both these rookies performing extremely well under the circumstances, Corral's been in the end zone twice. A shoulder injury for Jordan Cameron. That's why we haven't seen him much on this drive. Taylor Gabriel. And comes up just short of the five-yard line. Kiesel and Mitchell collaborate on the play. It's a third and one now for Cleveland with under a minute left. Yeah, you got to like that to play selection by Shanahan. The Steelers right now are getting hit from all sides with this offense. The quick screen to a very good open field runner in Gabriel. Smart. Single, single. 
third and a yard. Crowell and Agnew in the backfield. Steelers stack the line. Hoyer trying to do it himself, a miscommunication. And a he busted play yeah. for Cleveland. He missed the handoff to Ray Agnew. This is going to be a fullback dive over the left guard. And just to talk about a little bit of a confusion as a reverse pivot. Maybe he didn't want to do that. Critical mistake on third down. He's got two Rick rookies behind him with Agnew. And at that play, West Crowell rotating a tailback. Clock runs out before they get, get the kickoff, I right? So that'll be the end of the third quarter. Billy Cundiff will have a short field goal attempt to start the fourth. 27 to 17. A reversal here in Pittsburgh in the third. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. This is the NFL on CBS. Each week, CBS brings you the best game from the best conference. The season kicks off Saturday with Georgia and South Carolina. The SEC on CBS. College football at its best. Maggie Q, Dylan McDermott, Stalker, series premiere CBS Wednesday, October 1st. Browns put up 14 points in the third quarter. They can tack on three more to start the fourth with Billy Cundiff. 24-yard field goal is good. The Browns cut the Steelers' lead to seven. And we're underway here in the fourth quarter. Let's get a report from Jenny Dell. Well, Ian, you said it earlier. Clearly, this team came out and is a completely different team after the half. The confidence on this sideline, the energy has just mounted, and you can tell that they're excited to be out there to play. And just a couple injury updates for you. Screen right now is a knee contusion. His return is probable. I saw him working on that left knee area. And also Jordan Cameron, a shoulder uh, issue, and the return is probable on that one. All right, Jenny, this is a Cleveland franchise that makes some big decisions during the offseason. They fire their head coach, Rob Chijinsky, after just one year. He's now with Indianapolis. They let team president Joe Banner go in February, along with GM Mike Lombardi. So Ray Farmer, the assistant GM, was promoted to general manager. That's him on the left. And Jimmy Haslam, the owner of the team, watching from upstairs as the Cleveland Browns are trying to flip the script here in Pittsburgh. Cundiff kicks it off. Three Archer. He's going to take it out. Archer looking for a lane. There's nothing there. And nothing's working for Pittsburgh. K1 Williams with a stop on special teams. It's the premiere of Thursday Night Football on CBS and the NFL Network. It kicks off on Thursday when Pittsburgh meets Baltimore. AFC North Divisional Showdown. Football starts here. Another AFC North game that uh, will go a long way to deciding what's going on just in the second game of the season. But uh, the Steelers, uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Well, divisional games, Dan, you've always said it. You find out where you stand when you play someone in your division. And it's a two-game swing. First and ten for Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger steps, fires, nobody home. He was looking down the sideline, Will Johnson. Roethlisberger took a hit from Kitchen at the end of the play. Second and ten. Uh, for Archer to take that ball out of the end zone, that's an under eight yards deep. It costs his team ten yards. And plus, when you defensively, if you can have your opponent start inside the ten yard line, that just gives you a whole better feeling about the start of the drive. Tree Archer, a rookie from Kent State, trying to provide his team a lift. But he puts the Steelers in a hole. Roethlisberger steps up, dials up the deep ball down the sideline. Incomplete. Too far for Wheaton. And that was Buster Screen back there defensively. And Screen is back on the field. Well, he has shaken off that left knee contusion. And this will loosen him up for sure. Not much of a route by Wheaton, just relying on his pure speed. But Screen matches him stride for stride. 
Screen suffered a broken right thumb on August 15th. Had surgery on that thumb on August the 18th. Hey, hey, Roethlisberger in the second half. Two of four for just 27 yards. The whole team reflects those stats. Working from the gun. Roethlisberger steps up and broke down. The Browns getting pressure on Roethlisberger once again. And give credit to Jabal Shear for busting through. Yeah, the former Pittsburgh Panther, number 97, working on Marcus Gilbert. Just overpowers Gilbert. Fourth sack of the day on Roethlisberger. Second given up by Gilbert. So Pittsburgh will punt it. Just under a minute gone by here in the fourth. Everything is turned at Heinz Field. Pressure moment for Queen, the rookie. Benjamin, return man, back pedals. All for the fair catch. He actually had room and time. 44 yard punt. Well, it has been the play of Brian Hoyer which has helped lead this Browns team back in the second half. Yeah, he's been absolutely perfect in the second half. With the tempo that he has set and the way he has delivered, uh, but he's gotten the help in the running game from a couple of rookies. That's opened up the play-action passing game, and now he has excellent field position and just seven points down to the Steelers. And they're doing it without one of their biggest weapons, Jordan Cameron. And Ben Tate is out with a sprained knee. And Josh Gordon is suspended for a year because of the repeat violation of the NFL substance abuse policy. Andrew Hawkins, he's chipped in nicely for this Cleveland offense. And Hawkins picks up five yards on the play, pull a Malu over there for Pittsburgh. Yeah, it was just a couple of plays ago where Hawkins made a catch and came up limping, so he appears to be okay. Second half. Completely different story, 199 total yards for the Cleveland Browns. They're now at 300 overall. On second and five, the cut by West. West drives forward across the 40. Well, Amalo couldn't get to him initially. Johnny Mantell was a storyline at the end of the first half as to whether or not Cleveland would go to him. Pedden sticks with Hoyer and it's paying off. How about the veteran move right there? by West to just head straight up the field. Take the handoff. Hoyer, deep ball, on the way! Incomplete! Almost intercepted. Benjamin, the intended target. Ike Taylor back there for the Steelers. No interceptions last year for Ike Taylor. He should have made this catch. As he sees it, and has a great bead on it, and it goes right off his fingertips. Isaiah Crowell is in. We've seen a lot of the pistol here in the second half. Second and ten now for the Browns. Inside the Pittsburgh 40. Give it to Crowell. He's got a lane. Crowell shakes a tackler. Crowell driven down at the 21-yard line. Terrence West, Isaiah Crowell. These are not guys that were necessarily on the scouting report before this one started. Really good coordination in that offensive line on the stretch run. Greco Schwartz and Mack opening another big hole. 16 yards that time. But Tonio has been excellent up front as well. And of course, Joe Thomas, the seven-time Pro Bowler. Crowell is brought down immediately by Shazier. Loss of four on the play. He led Ohio State in tackles each of the last two years. And he had 22 tackles in the preseason. He's been a real bright spot in this uh, Steeler defense. Second and 14. Steelers holding on to a seven-point lead. Player making sure everybody's on the same page here. Plenty of time in the play clock. Player six. He throws. Wide open, Andrew Hawkins. And it's a first down inside the 10 for the Browns. Look how calm and cool Hoyer is under that pressure. Finding Hawkins in the middle of the zone in front of Palomalo inside the 10 now. It's a bootleg here. Hoyer will throw. It's a caught. Touchdown, Travis Benjamin. 
Brian Hoyer is on the money. And the Cleveland Browns have come all the way back. Touchdown, Cleveland. Stunning development in Pittsburgh. That's one stunned head coach in Mike Tomlin. But again, it's a play action. We just had a nice run by Crowell. The play action gets Hoyer out of the uh, traffic in the pocket where he can Come find his receiver the in the back play. of the end zone. Travis Benjamin celebrates his first NFL touchdown. Brian Hoyer has looked calm. He has been poised. And he has led a confident Cleveland offense in this second half. Seven plays, 51 yards. We are all tied up. NFL kickoff weekend. Two minute and 35 second drive for the Cleveland Browns. It culminates in a Hoyer to Benjamin nine yard touchdown. The Browns have knotted this one up at 27 apiece. Cundiff kicks it through the uprights. And the Steelers will have it at the 20. Pennsylvania born making his NFL head coaching debut. Mike Patton and the Browns all tied up. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by CenturyLink. Your link to what's next. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And by the all-new Chrysler 200. America's import. 123rd regular season meeting between these two teams. The Steelers and the Browns are tied at 27 apiece with 11.15 to go in the fourth quarter. The Steelers open up first and 10 from the 20. Off the hesitation by Bell, Paul Kruger there defensively. And a flag thrown. Back at the 18-yard line. Holding. Number 83 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Nothing is going right for Pittsburgh in the second half. Yes. Nothing. Especially when a 10-year vet gets called for holding, as Heath Miller just did. 10 penalties costing the Steelers 91 yards. We got 58. Let's go. Scoot. <laughs> First and 20 now for Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger on a give for Bell. Bell shakes a defender. Le'Veon Bell brought down just short of the 20 as he got around Kruger brought down by Whitner. Watch the move by Travis Benjamin at the goal line. He just stutters a little bit and he gets in behind Ike Taylor. Really a heads-up move right there. Little stutter step, and then Taylor not having the speed to keep up with the young rookie, Travis Cap, Benjamin. Cap. You used After the eight-yard game by it, Bell, he's got 90 yards on the ground and a touchdown on 16 carries. This is a second and 12 for Pittsburgh. Bell again. Bell takes it to the 20-yard line. Arkevius Mingo over there defensively for Cleveland. Two-yard gain. And the natives are getting restless. A smattering of booze for that play selection and that result. Injury update on Tree Archer. Knee trouble and an ankle injury. He will not return for Pittsburgh. Dime package here for Cleveland. They have only three first downs this half. This is a third and ten. Nine and a half to play in the fourth quarter. Rush is coming. Roethlisberger gets rid of it. Incomplete. Antonio Brown. The intended receiver, Joe Hayden there defensively. And the Pittsburgh Steelers will punt. Great coverage by Joe Hayden. He's had a rough first half, but this is a good way to bounce back as he lets Brown get the free release, but prevents him from uh, making any play on that ball. Roethlisberger throwing it away from the defender and out of bounds. So once again, it's Brad Wing. Oh, a fake. Toss to the sideline. And it's caught. The Steelers go into the bag of tricks. Robert Golden on the pass. Antoine Blake on the receiving end. 26 yards. And they needed it. Absolutely. Watch the throw here. 
wide open. They, for some reason, the Browns leave a gunner totally uncovered on the outside. Was it the rookie Justin Gilbert's responsibility? He's running out like a guilty man right there, misses a tackle. And the Steelers get new life at the 45. Robert Golden, who has been a special teams ace for the Steelers now in his third year, making the connection to Blake. Hand off for Bell. Maybe on Bell carries just short of midfield. It's a four-yard pickup. Jabal Sheard makes the stop, and they'll jaw back and forth after the play. Mike Tomlin's team desperately needed a lift, and it may come on special teams. Yeah, he may have pulled a uh, page out of Bill Cowher's playbook with the onside kick in the Super Bowl. But special teams giving the Steelers the spark they needed. Second and six now for Pittsburgh. Bell remains in there. Yeah. Right at the eight minute mark of the fourth. Once again, it's Bell. Acceleration, and he gets caught right away. Buster screen read it perfectly. It's a one yard gain. First half, Pittsburgh, 27 points, 364 yards. Second half for Cleveland, 24 points. They've thrown for 162 yards. They've put 16 first downs together after only having three in the entire first half middle 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 it's a third and five now for pittsburgh Blue 80. Blue 80. roethlisberger shotgun protection holds up lets it go in a crowd broken up justin brown young receiver the intended the target field. an incomplete pass fourth down dansby and the veteran jim leonard there Inside receiver is Brown, and that's a real tight window there. He had the ball in his hands, and then uh, gets hit by both Leonard and Dansby, but that's the ball that uh, Justin Brown has to make. Jim Leonard is the return man now for Cleveland, standing at his own 10-yard line. The punt from wing. Leonard hauls it in. There he gets called for. Penalty marker is thrown back on Pittsburgh's end of the field. We got a helmet down on the uh, field at the 45. That may mean hands to the face because there are two separate penalties, it appears, on this play. Michael Palmer lost his helmet. During the kick, personal foul number 97 of the receiving team for grasping an opening and taking the helmet off of an opponent. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Jabal Shear called on the penalty. Cleveland will be pinned deep in its own territory. Go back to the last play. Here's Michael Palmer and Jabal Sheard. And notice how after the ball is punted, Sheard will take the helmet off Palmer. That's why it's not uh, an automatic first down for the Steelers. And yet a penalty against the Browns. It'll back them way up. Browns are operating from their own six-yard line. Tie game. Play fake. Hoyer tosses. It's caught by Barnage. And Barnage gives Cleveland warm room to work with. It's a 13-yard gain to the 20-yard line. And again, it's the play action. A little rollout at the uh, zone read. And a good job of setting down in that zone coverage by Barnage for his first catch. Jordan Cameron dealing with a shoulder injury. Barnage and Jim Dre have had an impact at the tight end position in the second half. Pistol formation. Terrence West slips down, and the Steelers were ready for it. Nothing there, no gain for the rookie West. Tight ends have been real important, as you mentioned, Ian. Dre has two catches for 30 yards. Cameron had that 47-yarder, and now Dre gets into the air. Rather, Barnage gets into the action. Hoyer oh, doing a good job of finding the open man. The Cleveland Browns trailed by 20 back in 66. Came from behind to beat the Giants. Biggest comeback ever. Incomplete. Looking for Taylor Gabriel. And a flag is down. They were down 24. That was the largest hand, lead for hand Pittsburgh. Hands to the face. Number 97 defense. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Cameron Hayward. Now a starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Dick LeBeau's defensive group. That's 11 penalties, 96 yards. 
the rankings last year were off compared to what the Steelers have grown accustomed to. We come up on six minutes to play here in the fourth. The give to West. Up the middle, West. Not across the 30-yard line. Hit by Lawrence Timmons. Nine-yard game. It's not too late to play NFL.com Fantasy. Enjoy free new mobile app so you can join, draft, and play from anywhere. Sign up at NFL.com slash Fantasy. On the ground once again. Terrence West. Oh, he breaks free! West dishing out some punishment into Pittsburgh territory. Cortez Allen whiffed, and then West makes him pay to the tune of 29 yards on the ground. Well, the offensive line is dominating now. Right up the middle they go. And then the vision to cut to the outside, break the tackle. Watch him punish at the end of the run as he takes down Mike Mitchell. Boyer off the play fake. Throws to Miles Austin. And a modest gain of three yards on the play. West is now at 100 yards rushing on the day. And his fellow rookie, Crowell, has two rushing touchdowns. This is after Ben Tate went out of the game with a knee injury. Second and seven now. Pistol for the Browns. Under five minutes to go in the field. Tied at 27. Crowell is in the game for Cleveland. Hoyer throws. Diving attempt by Cortez Allen. Incomplete. Allen thought he had a clean pick. Miles Austin, the intended receiver. Boy, Hoyer's lucky because this is a real risky throw to the outside. Cortez Allen with a good break on this ball. But uh, he doesn't quite control it. You can see the ball hit the ground there. Good call by the officials. Third and seven. Hoyer, 3-0 last year as the starter for Cleveland. This is his fifth career NFL start. Play clock is down to two. Down to one. And a timeout called. Browns will have two remaining. Right now, they're looking at about a 54-yard field goal. But first things first, they face a third and seven when we come back to Pittsburgh. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Quicken Loans for a mortgage experience that's engineered to amaze. And by Subway. Stay in summer shape with a super stack protein pack Subway Club. Subway, eat fresh. Terrible towels out in force. They're in Heinz Field. Pivotal play here for the Cleveland Browns. On a third and seven from the Pittsburgh 35. Hoyer after the timeout. Knocked away. He tried to squeeze it in to Gary Mardage. And now what do you do? You're looking at a 54-yard field goal attempt or you play the field position game. Well, here's your answer. It's going to be a field goal attempt, or is it not? Looks nope. like uh, Lanning's in to punt this one away. So Mike Pettin with a defensive slant. Former defensive coordinator wants to put the game into his defense's hands. But I would like to have known what he has said at halftime to this ball club. Newt Rockney fired him up. There was nobody deep for Pittsburgh. Now Antonio Brown comes out onto the field and settles in at the nine-yard line. Penalty marker is thrown. It's, it's a delay penalty. again. They'll take the five yards. If I'm the uh, Steelers, I refuse this. But they're going to take it. Why, why take this one? You want the ball to go into the end zone for a touchback. Bring it out to the 20. So they give Lanning a little more room to work with here. Brown settles in at the 10. 4.37 to go in this fourth quarter. More penalty flags. Now the five yards is coming back because Terrence Garvin jumped in the neutral zone. False start. False start. Number 57 offense. That penalty declined. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. Halftime score 27 to 3. 
you know, Pittsburgh. That's, that's tough when your center false starts. Christian Yount called for the penalty that time. Lanning trying to place it inside the 10. Bounce up in the air, coverage downfield. Touchback. Wow, that close. Too many cooks spoiled the soup. Chris Tabor thought they had it nailed, the special teams coach. The lean, the contact right there is the question whether or not Leonard touched it. No, but he touched Leonard, and Leonard's in the end zone, but the ball hits right there, and that's a great call by the officials. It broke the plane, so this is a touchback, and it'll come out to the 20. Steelers have some breathing room here. 4.26 to go. Instead of being pinned at their own one-yard line, Steelers have it first and 10 at the 20 in a tie game. Roethlisberger, and a toss, maybe on Bell, through traffic, Bell works his way to the sideline, out of bounds. Across the 35, it's a 19-yard gallop after the catch. So they go back to the original script. This is how they started the game, getting Bell a couple of uh, pass receptions, one on a screen pass, and this one uh, good for 19 yards. 97 yards on the ground for Bell and a touchdown, 86 yards through the air. Bell remains in there. Blue receiver set for the Steelers. Bell is the stutter step. Up the middle. Bell stays on his feet to midfield. Terrific effort for the second year running back out of Michigan State. Got a good block from DeCastro. 11 yard gain. Yeah, did a good job of hesitating, finding the hole exploding through it and then putting his right hand down to maintain his balance and pick up an extra five he is over a hundred yards now 108 on the day for bell he could go over a hundred receiving as well we are under four minutes to play blue 80 blue 80. single set back bell go back to it bell to spin and the browns ride him down mingo among those there, limiting Bell to a two-yard gain. The clock is moving, 328 and counting, left in the fourth. You can see both teams with just two timeouts. Will Hoyer get another opportunity? Mike Petton electing to punt. Could have been a 54-yard field goal attempt. This is not the easiest place to kick field goals, as we know through the years of Heinz Field. Yeah, but on a day like today, no wind at all. Might have been worth a shot. Second and eight. Roethlisberger on time. Justin Brown. So new faces emerging here for Pittsburgh in the passing game. Marcus Wheaton, Justin Brown replacing veterans. And we're down to 2.42 and ticking here in the fourth. That's Justin Brown's third catch. Wheaton has four. LaGarrette Blunt has checked in. Roethlisberger, 332 Cap yards gun, through gun. the air. Alert, we're down alert. to two and a half a minute. This is a third and one for Pittsburgh. On a gift for Blunt, and he is denied. The Browns all over it. Billy Wynn. First man there, it's a loss of three on the play. Uh, basically, it's a draw play on third and short. They pull the guard, they pull the uh, tight end, an absolute penetration. Billy Wynn leading the way, and the Steelers are going to have to punt the ball back to the Browns. Two minutes to play, all tied up in Pittsburgh. Mike Tomlin's team was in control at halftime of 27 to 3, 24 unanswered points by the Cleveland Browns in the second half, and now Pittsburgh is punting it to Cleveland. Brad Wing to Jim Leonard. Leonard has to go over his head, and this will roll to the end zone. The Browns will have it at the 20-yard line with a minute 53 to work with. 
Week one NFL action continues later today on Fox, then tonight at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. And tune in tomorrow for a Monday Night Football doubleheader. Mike Pettit in his NFL head coaching debut. Last time the Browns won their season opener 2004 against Baltimore, Jeff Garcia was at quarterback for Cleveland. Kyle Shanahan has pushed all the right buttons in the second half. Offensive coordinator for the Browns. So they have a drive left in here at the end of regulation. Hoyer pumps, looks downfield, and brought down. Ryan Hoyer, big sack by Hayward for Pittsburgh. It's a loss of six. A great job in the secondary. Hoyer wanted to go with the out and up. You saw the fake right there. It had to come back to the other side. And by that time, Mitchell Schwartz gets pushed right into his quarterback. So Mike Tomlin dialed up. Second and 16 now. And the Browns taking their time. They might be playing for OT at this point. Well, with, this field, with this field position, he's not going to take any chances. Although he just did there, throwing into a crowd. Double coverage there against Andrew Hawkins, William Gay, there defensively for Pittsburgh. This is now third and 16. And the incomplete pass stops the clock. Actually, it gives the Steelers a free timeout, if you will. Steelers crowd comes alive. Third and 16 for the Browns. 104 left to play. Tied up at 27 apiece. And a quick pass. Engulfed. Hawkins. Brought down by William Gay. 57 seconds remain. And the Browns did very little with that possession. In fact, they moved backwards. Yeah, how much do they miss Jordan Cameron out with a shoulder injury? and Josh Gordon. No real threat at this point in the game. A go-to guy that just don't have for Brian Hoyer. Pittsburgh has one timeout remaining. 57 seconds. They put two more on the clock. So 59 seconds left here in regulation. And who would you rather have running your offense than Ben Roethlisberger? Chance for Pittsburgh to have excellent field position here with Spencer Lanning averaging 44.3 yards per punt on the day. Todd Haley huddling up with his offense. Ben Roethlisberger, 32 game-winning drives in his career. Two of them against the Browns. Short punt. Brown lets it bounce. It does take a Cleveland roll. It will settle in at the 43-yard line of Pittsburgh. 47 seconds left on the clock. A 48-yard kick. Sean Sweezum, his career long at Heinz Field is 49 yards. And the direction that uh, he may try a game-winning field goal is the difficult direction. Although today, you look at the streamers at the top of the goalpost, and they're absolutely limp. Yeah, it's been very mild. Good day for kicking. The field's in great shape as well. 47 seconds left. Steelers and Browns tied at 27 apiece. Week one of the 2014 NFL season. Working from the gun, Roethlisberger. Hooks a pass to Le'Veon Bell and picks up two yards on the play. Carlos Dansby there defensively. Clock is rolling, 36 seconds left. Roethlisberger trying to get everybody together here. We're down to 32 seconds left. A lot of time off the clock. All for a two-yard gain through the air. Down to 26 seconds left. Roethlisberger throws to the sideline. Adjustment made. And the catch by Wheaton. First down into Cleveland territory. And brought down at the 44-yard line. The Steelers have used their final timeout with 20 seconds remaining. Yeah, they wasted so much time after that two-yard gain to Bell. And now they're in a tough spot because they can't use the sidelines. Side the Browns are going to be taking that away. And a 
allowing Roethlisberger to throw it maybe over the middle, but without the ability to call a timeout, difficult to get the field goal team out there lined up and get a kickoff. So that was a really a wasted amount of time that uh, after the two-yard gain by Bell. They need 14 yards to put Sweezen within a 48-yarder. And they've got 20 seconds to work with. From the 44. Blue 80. Shotgun Blue for Roethlisberger. Steps up. Rifles downfield. It's caught by Wheaton. We're down to 13 seconds left. Inside the 25. 10 seconds left. Roethlisberger getting everybody set. Six seconds left. He spikes the ball with five. And the Steelers will have an opportunity to win it. One of the big question marks coming into the game was Marcus Wheaton. How would he perform in his first start? Well, the last two passes have gone his direction, and he has delivered. Smartly getting onto the ground there, knowing that the time is running down. No Dice him here. And they do. Mike Pettin uses a timeout. Snapper Greg Warren took the opportunity to have a practice snap to Brad Wing. Remember, Wing, a first-year player, is the holder. First half was dominated by the Pittsburgh Steelers. 27-3 lead at the break. The Browns look like a completely different team to open up the second half. Fast-paced offense. Brian Hoyer got them into a rhythm, got them into a groove. They've come all the way back to tie this game at 27 apiece. But the Steelers with an opportunity to get the win with a field goal attempt at home. The snapper, Greg Warren. Wing will hold it. 41-yard attempt. Sweezer sweeps the leg. He's got it. Steelers win it on NFL kickoff weekend. 30 to 27, Pittsburgh. Ben Roethlisberger delivers again. Sweezum connects from 41 yards away. It's a perfect snap. The hold is perfect. And you know about the kick. Roethlisberger, 10-0 here against the Cleveland Browns. That is 11 straight home wins now for Pittsburgh over Cleveland. Mike Tomlin and the Steelers get it done with no time left. Sweezum getting congratulations from an imposing beard. Brett Kiesel, the veteran. Outstanding effort by the Browns to rally. And that man there, Brian Hoyer, leading his team back when it looked like they had no shot at all in this ballgame against the Steelers. Tremendous second half by Hoyer and the Browns. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Dell. Ben, 27-3 at the half. The team was able to rally and come out on top. Just overall, your thoughts on today's game? You know, you got to be happy with the win, but a little disappointed the way the second half kind of transpired. You know, we, we did good in the first half. Second half, we kind of got away from what we were doing and just making plays and, and being physical. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're up on the scoreboard. Overall, the offense was pretty strong in the rushing, running game. How did you feel the team did out there? Yeah, I thought we did a good job. I thought we ran the ball well. I thought we threw it well. The guys protected. Um, you know, I know it's going to be skewed a little bit because there's some sacks, but some of those sacks were coverage things and us trying to make plays down the field. So, overall, proud of the way we played. Week one, game one, win one. How important was this win in order to set the tone for the season? Well, that's all it is. It's game one. It's a divisional game. It's at home. We wanted to get to 1-0. We got to it. Doesn't matter how it, how it happens sometimes as long as you get there. Ian, back to you. Great game. All right, thanks. All right, Chetty. Thanks very much. Final score here in Pittsburgh. The Steelers 30-27 over the Browns. A 41-yard field goal by Sweezum to win it. Coming up next, it's the U.S. Open Women's Final between Serena Williams and Caroline Wozniacki.
For Dan Fouts, Jenny Dell, this is Ian Eagle. So long from Pittsburgh. We'll have bonus NFL coverage coming up for you after this, the NFL on CBS.